dear God, you know how much I've been looking forward to the pizza party. We've planned it for, well, it seems like forever. We sent out the invitations, and it took a while for everybody to tell me if they could come. Then we made a sign-up sheet so people could bring their favorite ingredients. Even pineapple. Dad and I were going to make the dough so everybody could make their own personal pizza. I never helped make the dough before. So I was excited when we started setting out the ingredients in Grandma DeMartino's recipe. We had to make a lot of dough so everybody would get their pizza. Now, when you make pizza dough, you need to put some yeast in a bowl with water and then wait for it to have some bubbles. Dad had a phone call, so I waited some more. And waited, and waited, and waited. I thought I waited long enough, but I didn't. We waited on the dough to rise, but it never did. I thought I'd ruin the whole party, but then Dad said even Grandma did the same thing. We went to the store to get some pre-made dough we could use. It wasn't like Grandma's, but at least that way, we could still have the party. God, thank you for a great party. We need to try it again sometime. But next time, help me to remember to have a little more patience. Chase. Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. What's up? I'm Caleb and this, oh, hold on, wait for it. <laughs> this is my Bible. And the Bible isn't just a handful of stories. No, it's an entire library. History, poetry, dreams, eyewitness accounts, and all of it fits together to tell one big story. How God created each one of us. How he loves us so much that he's made a way for us to live with him forever. But the story takes time to unfold. Hundreds of years, actually, thousands of years. We're still waiting to see exactly how it will all play out. That takes patience. And I have four stories right here that walk us through what it can look like. We start off in the book of Luke. Okay, takes a while to get that far. Here, we meet a man named Simeon who has been serving and worshiping God his whole life. In fact, God's Spirit has given Simeon an incredible promise. You will not die before you see the one God is sending to save us. What? That's amazing! Incredible! Except there's no timeline no day or even year circled in red on the calendar. It's like having to wait for Christmas your whole life. Now it's time to jump back to the Old Testament and the book of Exodus. Almost back to the beginning. God has freed his people from slavery in Egypt and led them through the desert to Mount Sinai. Now, their leader, Moses, has been called up to the mountain to talk to God. And the people, they're getting restless. But instead of waiting patiently, they decide to rustle up their own golden opportunity. And the results are incalculably bad. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Let's slide back to the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Esau is Isaac and Rebekah's oldest son, born moments before his twin brother, Jacob. But those few minutes mean that Esau will gain special rights and property one day. That is, until Esau comes in from a day of hunting with an empty belly. And he's so hungry that he might just trade his entire birthright 
for what's basically a spicy bean hot pocket. Let's wrap up in the Gospel of Matthew. Here, God's people have been waiting for hundreds of years for the rescuer God promised long ago. And they're on the lookout for a king or, or a warrior. But instead, a carpenter turned teacher shows up riding a donkey along the dusty road into Jerusalem. The people may not be sure who he is, but they're ready with palm branches and an impromptu parade. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. <laughs> True patience means that no matter how much you want something, you're willing to wait, whether that's five minutes or five years. And I can't wait or can wait to see how it plays out in you and me. Bon appetit, everyone. My name is Graham. I'm dressed like this because I want to know what it feels like to be a real chef. I want to be able to bake a cake that's as tall as me. I wanna make chocolate chip cookies that are so gooey, the chocolate stretches a full six feet. I wanna understand what fondant is. Fondant? Fondant? I wanna be able to say the word fondant. But like most things in life, becoming a real chef takes time. It takes patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I know a thing or two about patience. I signed up for a baking class six weeks ago that wasn't supposed to start until today. So I have to wait. And today I found out that the class has been postponed for another two weeks because our teacher is sick. It looks like she's going to be okay, but Still, I have to wait some more. So now I'm wondering, what if I never get to go to class? What if it gets postponed again and again and again? What if it stays this way forever? forever. 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 The longer I have to wait, the harder it gets. If only there was some way to make the waiting not feel so hard. <laughs> Maybe there is a way. In today's story, we'll learn about a guy named Simeon who had to wait a long time for God to keep his promise. But Simeon didn't have to wait alone. So, I guess I'll see you soon. I'll just wait here. Oh man, I could really go for one of those gooey chocolate chip cookies right about now. Mmm, chocolate. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2. Verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. 
Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. And one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. The temple courtyard? I'm on my way. Where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's Spirit led Simeon straight up to the Temple Mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard, allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. We don't know for sure how long Simeon had to wait before he got to see Jesus, but it's possible he had to wait for years. We usually don't have to wait years for something to happen, but sometimes when we're waiting, it can feel like years. Sometimes it can feel like forever, ever, 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 ever. Like when you're waiting for your birthday or Christmas, or when you're waiting to feel better while you're sick. I know it's hard to wait, but here's the good news. You don't have to wait alone. God is with you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what the whole world is going through. And he knows how it will all turn out. So talk to God. Put your trust in him. He's going to be with you through everything. In fact, God will be with you forever. So that's the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember God is with you. I still have to wait for my first baking class. Maybe it'll happen in two weeks, maybe longer. But no matter what, I won't be waiting alone. God will be with me. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have some gooey chocolate chip cookies for us to try by then. I wonder if the goo will stretch from me to you. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> see you then. Hey North Kids, thanks for joining us today. 
for a new theme of Bake Off. My name is Pastor Mark, and we had a great thing learning about patience today. How many of you aren't patient? That's right, sometimes I'm not either, and I know God can help me with that as I look to Him. And we learned that from Luke chapter 2 in Simeon's life. He waited so long for things in God's promise that he, he actually had some gray hair that came in. He turned gray because he waited so long. I bet you don't have too many gray hairs, do you? Yeah, boys and girls, you probably haven't waited that long like Simeon, but maybe you felt that way. Maybe you felt like something coming up, a special party that you had planned, uh, maybe something that you're looking forward to at school, and maybe just something, a gift or something that you're like, man, I can't wait till it gets here from Amazon that you're excited about. But God's gonna give you patience to learn how to wait. Like we learned in our Bake Off theme this month, and we're learning that it's gonna be so great realizing, man, just like baked goods, it takes a while to mix up all those ingredients, it takes a while to put it in the oven and wait for it, it takes a while when it comes out and you gotta wait till it cools so you don't burn your lips. But it's worth the wait when you taste that yummy cake or yummy cookie that you made or your mom made and you waited patiently for it. So hopefully this month you'll learn some more about how God can help you in your life with patience. God bless you guys. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye now. Hey, Neil, do you want to go and play on the playground? No. I can't wait to be a little older. I want to be a race car driver. I can't wait to be a little stronger. I want to be a firefighter. So many things that I can grow up to be. But right now I I don't want to miss, don't want to miss what's awaiting here for me oh, oh. Looking all around me, oh, oh. I got everything I need oh, oh. I'm not gonna rush cause I'm right where I'm supposed to be oh, oh. I'm living in the moment, oh, oh. with my hopes and all my dreams oh, oh. I'm not gonna rush cause I'm right where I'm supposed to be I'm right. 